Hey guys and welcome back to another video and in this one we're going to be starting a rebuild of the Miami Marlins. Um, I'm kind of thinking about, it's what I've been doing so far, but I'm kind of thinking about going back and forth between what the teams are rated at right now. Um, starting with the 30th and going to the 1st, then the 29th, which is the Marlins, um, then back to the 2nd, and back to the bottom, and then back to the top, and you know, continuing in that type of a pattern. Um, if anybody's watching and they want to see me do a specific team, um, I'd be more than happy to, to, <laughs> to switch up that pattern and jump to the team that um, someone would really like to see next. Um, so just let me know if anybody is watching and would like to see a specific team. Let me know down in the comments below. Um, if you do like this video, feel free to leave a like. Um, if you want to see more of it as well, feel free to subscribe. Um, I will be uploading more videos and hopefully some other um, types of videos as well. Um, I have one coming out soon after this, just a short one for, uh, for I guess it's like a challenge video um, involving the Home Run Derby. But uh, yeah, let's get started with the Miami Marlins because I mean this team is pretty, uh, let me just focus on this for a second, I have problems thinking and talking at the same time which is kind of like questionable, why am I, why am I doing these videos? Um, but yeah. Uh, so we're gonna leave the scouting on auto manage, I think. But we will look to uh, to fix up the the actual scouts that we have on our uh, coaching staff, or I guess they're their own section. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, the Marlins are pretty much they're probably gonna need a lot of help everywhere uh, for the most part. They really don't have much of a strong team. They're in the obviously in the process of rebuilding. Um, at the very beginning of it, I think. Um, and, you know, there's going to be some time where they're not very good, and that definitely will show up a little bit in this rebuild. Um, now, this rebuild's probably going to go, um, um, you know, unless it's a surprise and we do really well, um, this rebuild's probably going to go more than three or four years, maybe, maybe around five or six, depending on, on uh, how quickly we're able to come back into contention. Um, but again, we'll see as we go, and, you know, like I was saying, we're probably going to need to, 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 to bring in some help in almost every aspect of the team on the roster. Um, I mean, we have a lot, not a lot, but we have a decent amount of prospects in the organization, and, you know, some of them may actually turn out to be to be very helpful moving forward some of them may not or some of them may be taking way too long and we might use them for trades um the same type of stuff that we've been doing in the past videos uh we will be going through the the um the draft we will be going through the draft as well so we're gonna have everything included in this um so i'm gonna jump into the roster screen and finish fixing up all the different uh things that i need to check before like the scouts um, on their contracts and fixing that up and um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna look through the roster real quickly so we're not sitting here for 20 minutes while I look at it um, and then I'll meet you guys back on that screen and kind of go through what I'm thinking about and how we're gonna how we're gonna move forward to uh, to getting this team in a position of contention so we're here at the roster screen and right away this team needs a lot of work um, it's it's really in no position obviously to uh, be winning much uh, right now so it is going to take a lot of time I think for this team at least several years before we come into contention or start playing some winning baseball um, but we are going to have to make a few trades uh, we're going to have to be a little bit patient with the development of a lot of these of the prospects that are in this organization right now um, but again it's it's going to take a lot of work uh, there's a lot to be done on this roster um, now like I mentioned, there's a lot of prospects, a lot of B potential prospects here. The only problem is they're all fairly fairly low rated right now. So like I mentioned, it's going to take at least at least a few seasons before they're anywhere near major league level, major league ready for the for the most part for most of them. Uh, we do have a couple guys, a couple of prospects that are ready to be in the major league level right now. Guys like um, where are they? Anderson and Brinson pretty much as the two main guys there that fall into that category um, but at the major league level we really don't have 
a lot of talent. Um, and the majority of the the, uh, the players that we have at the major league level that are really going to be able to, to carry this team at all um, are guys that we're probably going to be looking to trade. Guys like Real Muto, uh, Castro, Chen, Prado, uh, Straley. Uh, the older guys who have MLB experience, guys who have a little bit bigger contracts. Those are guys that we're going to be looking to move on from. Probably Baraclaw too. Um, now I did go into the free agent pool and pick up a couple guys who I will point out as we go through the roster here. I'm going to go through very briefly and try to keep it as short as possible because there is a lot to go through because um, this team does need a lot of work. Um, but starting with the starting pitching, uh, we, we have a solid rotation at the moment. Um, not a winning team's rotation, but not a terrible one either. Um, enough to get us by. And Chen and Straley are two guys that we're going to be looking to move on from. And Garcia and Urania are two guys that we're going to be looking to build around, at least for the next few seasons. Um, now, our hope is that a lot of these pitching prospects here uh, develop nicely and can come up to the major league level and really play a part in the coming years. Uh, but for the most part, we're probably going to have to wait on a lot of them. Uh, now, Caleb Smith and Aaron Blair are two guys that we can kind of like use to fill in the rotation once we trade Straley and Chen. And Conley's kind of going to be a back end of the rotation pitcher. Uh, we did pick up Blair for that reason to fill in. Um, he does have a lot of potential, as does Smith, so they're both still relatively young. So, you know, hopefully they can develop and give us a few more options for the rotation um, for the time being. Uh, we did also pick up a lower rated prospect here who has some solid potential, but, um, you know, he's only 56 overall, so it is going to take a lot of time. I really mo mainly picked him up because he's only 18 years old and he does have that potential. But again, it's going to take a little while for him to develop. Um, but moving on to relief pitching, again, we have a couple of solid uh, solid prospects here that are going to take some time to develop. Um, guys like Guerrero and Hernandez might take a year or two as well. Um, I do want them to develop as much as possible before I have them on the Major League roster. Um, we picked up Paco Rodriguez and Tony Zeech as two guys who have major league experience that can uh, kind of like fill out the bullpen and give us a couple arms to hopefully that we can rely on um, and potentially be part of the future moving forward. Uh, they both were, ab were able to be picked up um, on relatively cheap contracts, um, as you can tell. And um, Whitgren and Steckenrider are two guys that I, I, I hope to be able to build around in this bullpen moving forward. Uh, so hopefully they develop as well. Uh, Guerra and Diaz here are two guys that we may look to use in trades. Um, if not, we're kind of going to have them, for the time being, on the Major League roster, just kind of like fill, the, fill, fill some holes on the team because, again, we don't have a lot of guys that are Major League ready and we really don't want to bring up guys who have potential um, too soon because it probably, it, it very well could hurt them. Um, or hurt their development. Uh, again, we are going to look to trade Barraclaw. Um, now, for the offensive side of things, the position players, we have Real Muto and Holiday at catcher. Real Muto, we're going to be looking to trade. Holiday is only really a backup catcher in my eyes. Um, he's, he can be a decent one. Um, I'm pretty sure we had him in the Orioles rebuild, and he did really well. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to happen in this one, but he is a solid uh, backup guy, for especially for a team that really isn't looking to go anywhere at the time being. Uh, but we do have guys in Banfield here and Wallach or Wallach, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, um, who are guys that do have room to develop, especially Banfield, he's only 18. Um, and they could potentially be starting catchers for us moving forward or backup, you know, major league level catchers for us in the coming years. Uh, though if we do trade Real Muto, which we will, I'm just not sure exactly when, um, we're going to have to pick up or look to receive a catcher who can either platoon with Holiday um, or take over that starting role in return. Um, so that's something that we need to keep an eye out for. Uh, moving on to first base, we have Garrett Cooper at the Major League level. Um, you know, not the best, but he does have room to develop, so I'm hoping he does. Uh, and we have O'Brien in the minors, kind of as a guy that we can call up if we need someone. 
um, maybe if someone gets hurt. Um, he does bring a lot of power to the table. He is more offensively oriented. Um, not the best fielder, but he is someone I feel like who, if we really do need someone to call up, at, you know, for first base or I guess the outfield, um, and we really don't have too many options, he is someone that I'm comfortable in calling up regardless of his overall rating. Uh, moving on to the middle infield, we have Castro and Prado, who both are guys that we're going to be looking to trade. Um, Diaz here has a lot of potential, and hopefully he can be a guy that we look at as a potential, uh, a potential future second baseman for us, because he is only 21. Um, he does have a lot of room to improve. Uh, Matt Dominguez is someone we picked up kind of to hold, hold the fort for the time being at the major league level for us. Um, at third base because we really don't have a lot of depth at first and third and he plays both and we are going to be looking to trade Prado um, so You know, he's someone who was relatively cheap and Is you know capable of playing at the major league level so you know it seemed like a good pickup for us for the time being um, At shortstop we have JT Riddle who if he doesn't develop in the next year or two uh, we will probably look to trade him um, but for the time being, he's our starting shortstop, and Rojas is going to be our backup uh, bench player who can play several infield positions. And he does actually have some decent contact here. Um, vision, um, you know, he's, he's not a bad uh, backup player. Um, hopefully he can perform. Um, but yeah, moving into the outfield, which is our, um, you know, aside from starting pitching, it's our, our deepest area in terms of prospects, as you can see. Um, we have Dietrich and Bostick in left, Brinson and Sierra in center, and Anderson, Gentry, and Arcia in right. Um, now Arcia and Gentry are two guys that I just picked up relatively cheaply, um, just to, to fill in those fourth and fifth outfielder spots to let the, the prospects develop a little bit for the coming year or two. Uh, we are going to have Brian Anderson start, obviously, uh, along with Brinson. Sierra might start the year in the minors. Um, we'll probably look to trade Dietrich. So, um, you know, depending on how they're doing, we'll either call up Bostick. Or actually, one, one, two. Yeah, we'll either call up Bostick or Sierra uh, once we trade him. Um, but again, we just want to give these guys time to develop. And the waiver marker next to Victor Victor Mesa um, is because I picked him up. Because he's a solid prospect. Um, I think he's the top overall international prospect right now um, in real life. And there's a good chance that he actually does sign with the Marlins. Um, but I did pick him up because he can develop into a nice player. Um, but I, I didn't expect them to put him on the 40-man roster. I'm not really sure why they did. Um, but I didn't want to leave him on there because then in the end it, it uses up his options. And you know we may end up losing him prematurely moving down the line if that happens so i removed him from the 40-man roster i'm hoping no one picks him up but if they do i think we can kind of bring him back but if not i probably made a mistake there which i will do my best not to replicate moving forward um after this but yeah, I think that kind of does it for the roster. Um, a lot of stuff to be done, a lot of trades to be made, a lot of waiting to be done on some of these prospects. Uh, but once they start to come up and once they start to develop, or some of them at least, we're going to start looking to pick up some more Major League uh, ready and um, you know impact players to, uh, to help us get on the track of contention and uh, really start to start to get this club in a winning position to move towards the playoffs. Um, but again, I don't expect that to happen for about two to three years, um, probably. But um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see how some of these prospects develop in the meantime. Um, now, I will be looking to make one or two trades, hopefully, before the season starts. Um, and if I can find something, I will meet you guys at that screen. If not, we're not gonna be looking to trade anyone just yet. Um, other than that. The next part will be the draft, so and we'll be able to see at that point how the team is doing so far for the first portion of the season. So um, depending on if I can find a trade, I will meet you guys at the next screen in just a moment. So the first trade is going to be for Martin Prado and Derek Dietrich. 
Uh, now we're going to be sending them to the Royals in exchange for Nikki Lopez and Chesler Cuthbert. Uh, Cuthbert is 25 seat potential, 67 overall. Um, he's got some decent contact. Now, he's not the best player, obviously, and he may not even make the Major League roster on a, a, a decent amount of teams. But, you know, he has room for improvement, especially with his age. And he plays first and third, which is an area that I wanted to share up a little bit more on our team, especially in, in uh, losing Prado. So he's probably going to take the place of Prado on the 25-man roster, and Dominguez will actually slide into the starting role um, at third base. So hopefully Cuthbert develops a little bit more. Um, if he can hit that 70 mark, low 70s, that would be perfect. Um, but we'll kind of have to see as time goes by how he uh, how he develops and performs. Um, the other guy that we're going to be getting, Nicky Lopez, is a, two years younger. He's 23, B potential, and he's only a 62. And he does need to improve and develop a little bit more. So he probably won't be someone that um, could potentially make the Major League roster for probably two to three years. Um, but he gives us another option um, for a shortstop if Riddle doesn't work out. He also gives us another option at second base if Diaz doesn't work out. And in, at, at least he gives us just another option to work with on the team in that uh, middle infield area. Um, he is decent at fielding, so hopefully again he improves as well. Um, that's kind of what we're hoping for, uh, for the most part right now in, in, in general, for a lot of the players, including the two that we're going to get in this trade, um, in Lopez and Cuthbert. But hopefully that works out for us. Um, I am going to look for another trade. Um, not sure exactly who I'm going to be trading just yet. I had a, had a list of seven players that I do want to trade before anything else, and that's um, Chen, Straley, Barakla, uh, Real Muto, Castro, Prado, and Dietrich. So we got two of them here in Prado and Dietrich, um, but we're going to be looking for another trade, I think, before the season starts. So hopefully we can find one, and I'll meet you guys back here at this screen in just a few moments. So for the second trade, we're actually going to be trading Kyle Barraclough and Wei-Yin Chen uh, to the Braves in exchange for closing pitcher A.J. Minter. Um, now, this kind of seems like we're giving away more than we're getting in return, but I have a feeling that it's actually the other way around. Uh, with Barraclough and his deep potential, even though he's 27 and 83 overall, we really don't know what we're going to be getting for him. So he's kind of the wild card here. Um, he very well could kind of stay around this mark but he also could very well um decline and, and quite a bit so we're gonna be giving him up and chen who really isn't gonna i don't think he's really gonna get much better he's already 32 and he's only a c potential um so we're also gonna we're gonna give up both of them in, in exchange for aj minter like i mentioned who is only 24 so he's younger he's got b potential which is better and he's already a 73 um, and he actually does fill in that closing pitching, closing pitcher role uh, that we're going to be opening up here in, in trading Barraclough. So um, it does fill the need that we that will that will need. It fills the need that we'll need um, in making this trade, as well as helping out with salary and making the team a little bit younger um, and a player that just has higher potential. Um, so hopefully in the end this really helps out our bullpen at least for the next few years and um, we'll kind of see how he develops as well uh, yeah you know there's no real real rush to um, to have these players come over and really perform but as long as they're developing and um, continuing to, to get better you know that that's really what we want to see because uh, again we're really not looking to to compete for a playoff spot for several years um, but again, I think this trade is really going to help us out, and um, that should be it for right now. I do have a few more players that I do want to look to trade, but we'll probably do that at the trade deadline. Um, so for now, I'll probably uh, this will probably be it, and um, I'll meet you guys again at the draft screen, and uh, we'll also, I guess, see how how the team's doing, how the team's performing up to that point. So I'll see you guys in just a moment. Now we are at the draft, but before we get into that, I just want to go into the roster and uh, show you guys the three three bigger names that are left on our roster that we did want to trade. Um, so real quickly, Starling Castro, uh, he got hurt around about a month into the season, uh, but he should be back before the trade deadline, if not before the All-Star break. 
So I'm not really worried about that having an impact on us trading him. Uh, but in the time that he has played, he's done very well. He's hitting almost 300, um, 350 on base. He's doing very nicely in the, uh, like I said, in the time that he's played for us. So again, I really don't expect that to be an issue. Um, you know, hopefully when he comes back, he's able to continue that play for the small amount of time before we trade him. Um, then there's Dan Straley, who just like Castro, we're hoping he can continue his play because he is really doing very nicely. So far, it's looking like his best season uh, so far of his career. And, you know, his, his ERA is more than, a, more than a run lower than his, you know, other career low. And um, we're just hoping he can continue that trend. His whip is really nice, too. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it works in the game the same way, same way it does in real life, where, you know, if a guy's doing really well, that, you know, ups his value and teams are going to be looking to get him more than, that, more than they were just, you know, a couple weeks or a couple months earlier. Um, I don't think it does, although that would be really cool if it did. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think it does. I'm just kind of like thinking in my head um, because I see this and I think like, oh, if this was real life, he'd be able to get me more in return than I was expecting. But, you know, I'm, I'm not expecting uh, that to be the case, though he is having a very nice season and hopefully he does keep it up. Maybe we'll be able to get something back in return for him. Um, and then that leaves JT Real Muto, who's doing, he's, he's not doing too good. Uh, he's doing pretty bad. Everything's trending down. Um, you know, not a good season. Stats are not there. Um, and he's not happy with the team performance, and he's not happy with the individual performance. So we're going to be looking to move him ASAP. I may not even wait for the trade deadline. Uh, just because I don't want him to trend too far down. Um, I'm going to keep a close eye on him moving forward. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to update you guys on those three players. Just because they're the three biggest names on the, te on the team right now. And they're the three guys left that I really wanted to move uh, this year. So um, moving in to the draft. I've or I haven't signed anyone, but we're not going to sign everyone. Steve Beckham... Um, who's 18, a 64 potential. He's a starting pitcher. He's only a 54. Um, Ezra Santana, who's a catcher. He's a D potential. He's only a 49. He's 22. And David Salgado, who's 21 shortstop. He's only a D potential as well. We're not going to sign them. Um, now, I, you know, it's kind of like we could just come in here and sign everyone that we draft uh, because we're in a full-on rebuild and really we could use all the pieces regardless but I'd rather not at least in the in the draft if I can help it I'd rather not be bringing in tons and tons of guys who are not very high rated um, or who don't have the potential to be highly rated um, you know I am gonna sign Ralph Alfred and I may do this for a couple guys here and there because um, he's only a deep potential he's 19 first base uh, but he's still only a 55 so he does have room for that improvement and he does have some nice stats, at least for the clutch and the contact. So I may just sign him, which I will actually sign him, um, just to have as a depth piece. And maybe if he does develop to what his potential is, he could be a backup slash bench piece for us a few years down the line. Because like you saw, his contact and clutch are, and you know, his hitting isn't that bad. So it could come in handy for us. Um, the other three guys that we are going to offer contracts to are starting pitcher Roberto Hernandez, who's 20 years old. He's an 87 potential, so B. He's a 61 overall at the moment, um, but, you know, he could develop into a nice player for us. And I know we have a ton of starting pitching, but you never know because that's, that is really important to have. And... You know, some of them are, are going to be useful in trades moving moving down the line. Um, so, you know, it's always good to have, have more, especially if they have good potential. Um, the next guy is going to be a catcher in Blaine Miles, which is nice. In t since we're losing Real Muto, I don't know what we're going to get back from him. I don't know how many decent catchers are going to be able to be signed or, or anything in the coming years. We do have a couple prospects. We have Holiday um, as the backup right now. But to have more pros, uh, prospects in at a position that is not necessarily always the strongest, 
um, or maybe it's hard to find some really good players in that position, um, it's always good to have some solid prospects in the system. Um, so Blaine Miles is 22, B potential, he's already a 66, he's got some solid hitting stats. His fielding's pretty good too, but his arm strength and accuracy I would like to see get a little bit higher um, to be a difference maker behind the plate sometimes. Um, durability could be a little bit higher too, but you know, I'm uh, I'm looking to maybe have him come up in the future uh, if, if he can develop quick enough. And then that leaves Nathan Dunton, who's a starting pitcher. He, we drafted him first overall or first round in the first round. Um, he's 18. He's a 93 potential starting pitcher, and um, he's a 60 overall. But his potential is really there, and um, he throws lefty, which is nice. Um, you know, he needs some work, obviously. He's only a 60, um, and that'll take some time. He's got really nice durability. Um, he actually has some speed, so that's <laughs> that's a little added bonus. Um, and he's got a little bit of contact, so that's nice. But yeah, he's going to take some time to develop, but he has the potential to be an ace uh, pitcher in a rotation, or potentially number two or number three. Um, so, you know, hopefully he develops as he should, and we'll be able to, to put him in the rotation in the future. Uh, but that does it for the draft, um, and I'm going to keep going. You know, <laughs> we're not really in a good position, but it's nothing that we expected any different. Uh, we're 20 and 41 last place in the division we are still ranked 20 i was i thought we were ranked 30th for a second but no we are still ranked 29th overall uh, so we haven't gotten worse but uh we haven't gotten any better really and that's to be expected for the time being but um yeah i'm gonna move forward to the trade deadline um if i do find a trade for someone like real muto i will definitely update you guys but i will see you at the trade deadline in just a moment so we made it to the trade deadline, and I'm here with w the first of two trades that we're going to be making. Um, the first one here is for Starling Castro. We're going to be moving him to the Athletics, and in return, we're going to be getting a third base prospect and two relief prospects. Um, these are two areas on the team that I would like to get a little more depth to. Um, it's third At third base, we only have James Nelson down here, who's only a 58 so it would be nice to get someone who's a little bit higher rated there. I know we have Dominguez and Cuthbert at the major league levels, but you know, Cuthbert's only a C potential. He's not really someone that I got for necessarily the future. Um, he could be a backup piece because of his age if he keeps developing, but other than that, um, you know, he's he's not gonna be anything more significant uh, for his role other than that. Uh, Dominguez is kind of again just just here for the time being as a, a placeholder um, so we're gonna be picking up Sheldon Noose I think we actually picked him up in a trade just to kind of make the trade go through in one of the past two rebuilds I forget I think it may have been the Dodgers otherwise it was the Orioles but he didn't really play a part for us because um, you know there wasn't enough time for him to make it to the major league level but in this one I'm I'm anticipating that he will play a part for this uh, franchise at some point down the line. Um, so overall, he's trending upwards, aside from his speed, of course. Um, but, you know, he's he's got B potential. He's already a 67, though he is 23. But um, he does have potential to be a solid Major League player. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting him on this team. Now, for the relievers, we have Hor uh, Norhe? Is that how you pronounce that? I've never seen that name before. Uh, Ruiz, anyway, we got Ruiz and we have Mejia, both 23, both B potential in the low to mid 60s. Um, the one thing I don't like is that their fielding is so low. Um, I know they need to develop in the majority of their attributes, but you know we really don't have a lot of relievers, so I think these guys are really going to help kind of fill out that position um, and give us some prospects that might uh, that could develop into some solid bullpen pieces for us in the coming years so we're gonna go with this trade for the first one it's mostly to pick up prospects in areas that we want to kind of fill up a little bit and also to get rid of the 7.8 million dollar salary that Castro is costing us so 7.8 
and we're only taking in 150k. That's pretty good uh, for players that are potentially going to play nice parts for us in the coming years. So that's going to be the first trade, and we're gonna I'm going to pick up in the at the second trade in just a second. So the second trade here is going to be for Dan Straley and JT Real Muto, and we're going to be trading them to the Minnesota Twins for three players. Uh, Alex Kirilov, who is a top prospect uh, in the outfield. Now, we don't really necessarily need too many more outfielders because we do have one, two, even Brinson, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, seven guys who are prospects. And, you know, obviously you'd want to fill out some other positions, but I couldn't, I really liked some of the guys on the Twins, and I couldn't really find a third piece that would be on the infield. I kind of wanted to get Jorge Polanco, but it would uh, cost us too much, um, so I couldn't get him. But, you know, Kirilov is a solid player, or he's going to turn into a solid player, hopefully. And, um, you know, I, I couldn't really pass him up. Uh, if anything, we, we'd end up trading some of these prospects in the future for some more impact players once we get to that point. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be picking up Alex Kirilov. Um, he looks really promising in his attributes as well, um, so I'm excited to get him on the team. He's someone who could potentially be there in a year or two, um, a little bit quicker than some of the other guys. Um, we're also going to be picking up Luan Diaz, who's 21B potential, 61 overall. He might need a little bit more time to develop, um, you know, but he's a first baseman. We really don't have too many first and third. That's why I picked up Noose in that other trade. Uh, why we picked up Cuthbert, uh, but we really don't have a solid prospect in the first base uh, roster, or not roster spot, but position. So we're going to be picking up Luan Diaz, and then also to fill in the spot at the major league level a little bit, at least to, to platoon with Holiday, we're going to be picking up Bobby Wilson, who has a salary under a million dollars, just barely, but you know, he's really not going to cost us much, and he's capable of playing at the major league level. So without, especially without um, negatively impacting his um, potential and everything else, like uh, if you bring up a younger player, which might do if they do poorly. Um, so we have Bobby Wilson, Luan Diaz, and Alex Kirilov in return for Straley and Real Muto, and that is going to be the second trade with the Minnesota Twins. So I'm thinking that that's going to be our only trades. If I do find another one for some reason that that I end up making, I'll of course let you guys know. Otherwise, I'll meet you guys at the end of the season. All right, guys. So we finished the year going 52 and 110, which was good enough for overall the worst record in all of Major League Baseball. Um, now, the only positives to come out of that are not only is our team or our system full of a lot of solid prospects now, but we are going to get the number one overall pick in the draft in the upcoming year. So that's going to be pretty cool to see. Um, now this is something that wasn't really unexpected to me. Um, I did think that the team was going to do this poorly, at least during the first year, um, especially with all the trades that we made in sending away a lot of older veterans to bring in a lot of prospects. Uh, but you know, it's, it's going to take some time. It's going to take at least a few years, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, for this team to kind of turn a corner and start playing some winning baseball. Uh, but real quickly to see the other teams in the majors, uh, the Phillies took the East, the Cubs took the Central, the Dodgers took the West, and the Nats and the D-backs are taking the two wildcard spots. Um, now the Red Sox won in the AL East, the Indians in the Central, the Astros in the West, and the Yankees, and surprisingly, the Orioles took the two wildcard spots here. Um, the Orioles, who were ranked 30th overall, the only team that was worse than us for the majority of the season, um, yeah, they took a wildcard spot, which is actually pretty cool to see. Kind of like a, a, a team that had everyone against them um, that turned it around and were able to make the playoffs. So that's actually really cool. I'm kind of rooting for them to win in this wildcard. Uh, which brings me to another point. We are 30th overall ranked now, uh, which is not good, but it is fitting for our record and the team for the moment. So hopefully that starts to trend upwards as we move forward. Moving into the roster, we had a lot of underperforming players <laughs> throughout the year um, or players that just did not do very well. 
Um, we had a couple of surprise showings where guys had nice seasons, a couple of guys that we were able to lean on, um, but overall not a good year for the Miami Marlins. But again, that was to be expected. So going position by position here, a little briefly, um, for starting pitchers, Trevor Richards was someone who came up towards the end of the year and he really played well, so he is someone I'm going to keep an eye on moving forward um, with a 1-3 ERA in 26 innings. Uh, Blair is someone that we're going to probably look to move on from um, unless we cannot find anyone to fill in this spot. Uh, almost 100 walks, 6-4-1 ERA, his whip was bad, he, he had 21 losses, which wasn't, isn't entirely his fault based on the team that we had on the field, but still it's, it's not a very good look for him, um, especially with all the other stats that he had. Um, Conley had a surprise year with a 3.19 ERA and 160 innings, so it was really nice to see him do well, and you know, more of an even record. I think he may be the only one on the team who kind of has that, who pitched the entire year. Um, but either way, very solid year by Conley. Smith as well had a solid year um, in the time that he did play. He came up a little bit later in the year uh, with a 3.3 ERA in 54 innings. So he, again, like um, Richards, is someone that I'm going to be looking at moving forward. Um, Urania had a solid year, 6-15. and 15. Again, the team did not help out his loss record. Um, 3.56 ERA and 170 innings. His whip isn't too bad. Um, so he's someone that we're going to lean on a little bit moving forward as well. And Garcia, who is kind of like the main pitcher in our rotation right now. Um, 20 losses, which isn't entirely on him, but we definitely want to see him do a lot better moving forward because his ERA was almost a 6. His whip was terrible. Um, just not a good year all around for Garcia. Uh, moving on to the relief pitchers, we had couple guys, Cloyd pitched I think three innings, he's not someone who's going to be sticking around. Hernandez, he pitched pretty, you know, he didn't pitch too bad when he came up to the majors for a little bit in September, um, so hopefully he continues to improve. Um, Tyrone Guerrero, again, we hope he improves, he is trending upwards, so that's nice to see, but when he was playing in the major leagues this year, um, he did not really perform very well at all. Uh, moving up, we got Paco Rodriguez, who had a 5 ERA, and Tony Zich, who had a 5 ERA. Both guys who we picked up in free agency to kind of be arms that we can rely on in this bullpen. So hopefully they turn things around a little bit. Um, you know, they're both on two years, two year deals, so we do have a little, we do have another year uh, to see if they if they change their direction at all. Um, Wickren had a nice year at a 3-3-2 ERA in 100 plus innings, um, almost 100 strikeouts. His whip was, was pretty good at 1.28. Um, definitely a little surprise. I expected Steckenrider to, to do more along the lines that Wickren did and Wickren to do a little bit more along the lines of Steckenrider, but, um, you know, nice, uh, nice year by Wickren. He kind of proved to us that we can rely on him in the bullpen, and we kind of did rely on him more than anyone else, especially in innings pitched. Um, Steckenrider, on the other hand, kind of a little bit of a letdown year. Um, his ERA isn't like, isn't terrible, but you definitely want it to be a lot better than what it was, um, especially if he's one of the bigger arms in the bullpen for us. So we hope he turns things around. Uh, Guerra and Diaz didn't do too great, but they kind of did as we expected kind of just holding spots in that bullpen for us at the time for the time being uh minter who aside from those few guys in the starting rotation kind of was the star pitcher on the team for the most part this year he had 30 saves for a team that won only 52 so that's pretty good to see uh he struggled a little bit in the second half his whip was ended up a little high um his era was higher than it was um though he did blow seven game seven save opportunities uh, but I do think that has to do with his clutch attribute, and uh, which is trending upwards. So hopefully that helps him moving forward, um, because he is looking like a, a solid player, a solid closer, um, or at least a setup guy if we can find another closer. Uh, but for now, he's the guy. Uh, moving into the position players, we had Bobby Wilson, who played well for us down the stretch with 12 homers. Um, he had, he only hit 238, but he was platooning with. Um, Holiday here, who actually got his average up over 200, which was nice to see. Um, so, you know, 
decent showing from the two catchers that we had for what we expected them to do. Um, first base, Cooper kind of did as we, as I expected, at least. Um, he gave us a little bit of pop, but he didn't really do too much on offense. Um, a lot of the guys on the team need to work on their on-base skills, um, so that's something that I'm kind of looking for, looking at in a lot of different players moving forward. Uh, Rivera here played a little bit in the second half of the year, um, just to fill a spot on the roster. Didn't really do too well, obviously. Only hit around 200 in a limited time. Uh, Diaz is someone that we're looking at for the future big time now. Uh, he came up and performed pretty well. Struggled a little bit down the stretch, um, so his average dropped. But he did show a little bit of power, showed some average for the most part. Um, very solid first year by him, uh, for sure. The only area for him that I'm a little worried about is his fielding. He made 17 errors, um, so the fielding percentage isn't really that great. Um, so hopefully he can improve upon that. Um, moving on from Diaz, we have Matt Dominguez, who, you know, the average wasn't really there, but he was in 151 games for us. He provided durability. He provided that, that um, guy that we needed to fill in, uh, which was really the main reason that we got him kind of as a placeholder uh, for the time being he did provide 17 homers so he did provide us with a little bit of pop which was which was a, a nice little bonus there for him um, Cuthbert didn't really perform as well as I thought he would especially with his contact rating um, so hopefully he can turn that around moving forward um, Riddle we'd like to see him do a little bit better if he doesn't in the next year or two we're definitely gonna look to be trading him Rojas had a very nice year for the time that he played. He was hurt for a while, um, but a 3.38 average. Um, I think his on base was over 400. Very nice year in the time that he did play. So that was nice to see. Uh, moving to the outfield, we got Bostick, who didn't really do too great for us. Gave us a little bit of pop, um, but you know, not a solid year for him hitting 204. Um, Brinson, I expect him to kind of progress over the next few years which I think is what he tends to do um, kind of gets a little bit better every year uh, from what I've seen but you know this year not the best with the average but he did provide 20 homers I do think his fielding percentage was really good um, yeah he only made one error all year so that was nice to see um, so nice season in certain areas for Brinson um, in right field we got Gentry who Kind of, again, was another placeholder, but he did actually <laughs> set a career high in hits, which was pretty cool. Maybe even homers. Yeah, homers too. So, a nice season for him at age 34. Um, nice to see that. Galloway came up and actually performed really well. Um, I should have sent down Bostick, but I didn't. I don't know why I didn't. Um, definitely should have kept Galloway up here, who hit 360 in 131 at-bats. Very nice year for when he did play. Um, Arcia provided a little bit better of a bat than Gentry because we did pick them both up in free agency. Um, Arcia is a little bit younger, obviously, so he could stick around. Um, but a nice year by him. Um, definitely, definitely not you know that bad. Kind of along the lines that we expected. Maybe a little more pop, but um, you know someone that we could definitely ha hang on to for the time being. Um, and Anderson, which is the last guy on the roster, um, he hit 27 homers, 167 hits, 70 RBIs, 308 average, on base was 358, which we'd like to see a little bit higher. Um, his slugging was 502, OPS 858. So a very nice year by Anderson, but again, you know, we'd like to see the fielding improve a little bit on his part. Um, so yeah, a pretty much not the best year overall by the Marlins, as I've mentioned before. Um, a couple guys here like Anderson, um, where is he? Rojas, um, there was another guy. Who was it? Oh, uh, Galloway. Galloway, Anderson, Rojas, um, Brinson, um, even Diaz. Guys like that on the offense, Minter, um, Whitgren, Urania, Conley, guys like that in the pitching staff all had nice years. Um, we'd like to build off of it. We'd like to get some of the other guys who did a little bit worse this year to, to turn things around because a lot of them do have potential. Um, but overall, filled with a lot of prospects, a lot of promising players that are going to be coming up hopefully for us in the coming years.
which I'm excited to see. Um, and hopefully they do well and can help turn this team around. Uh, but overall, obviously, for the first year, not a great year for the Marlins. Uh, but moving into the playoffs real quickly, we're going to see who who wins this. Washington took the wild card game. Can the Orioles do it? No, <laughs> the Orioles couldn't do it. Ugh. Such an upset. Um, they lost 8-2. to two. I figured they probably would. Um, moving on through the division series, we got the Cubs moving on, the Dodgers, Red Sox, and the Yankees. Uh, the Cubs and the Yankees are facing each other in the World Series. Let's see who wins that. Um, they have not started playing yet. Uh, it's tied 1-1. 3-2, Yankees are up. The Yankees have defeated the Cubs in the 2018 World Series. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that was act that is actually pretty cool how the Yankees were a wild card team. I always like to see the wild card teams in the World Series, um, kind of like the underdogs. But um, yeah, so that does it for the first season. Um, again, not the best, but we're hopefully going to be turning things around as we move forward. A little bit of patience with the prospects, and then we can start going out and getting some some bigger bigger names. Um, to bring on to this team uh, But I hope you guys enjoyed this video the second year two will be coming out shortly um, Sorry for the delay in videos recently uh, Just a little bit busy with some other stuff, but um, yeah, if you guys enjoyed it feel free to leave a like uh, Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more and um, I hope you're all doing well and until the next video. I will see you guys later <laughs>